Hello friends, today we're going to be solving a different kind of problem. This one comes from a midterm I took on, a cla on my class for game theory. And the problem goes as follows. It's asking you to find the, spra the sprague Grand function at each of the vertices. Now, if you don't even know what the function is, I'll give a brief explanation about it. The Sprague-Grundy function works for combinatorial, computational, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, sequential games. It's a lot of jargon for, essentially, it's games of the type in which the other player, one player goes, and then the next player goes. And even more so, the combinatorial aspect doesn't play too much here, but the, com the computational does, because that means that this game has known solutions. That means that given a certain position, a starting position, you know exactly who's going to win the match, as long as you play the game optimally. If you don't, well then you allow your opponent chances to win. There's no probability in this. And so for this game, the way it works, it's, it's not really explained, but the arrows indicate movement. And at any point in which you can't move, let's say you end up at B, well, clearly you lost the game. So in this case, each to find the spot running value, the way it works is you first want to find the points in which you know for a fact you lose the game. So those points are B, since once you're at B, you can't go anywhere else. Another value is L, which is down here at the bottom. I, another value in which you can't move from that position. And F. So these are all values that once you land there, it's game over because you have no longer legal moves. And when you do the spa Grundy function, you indicate those using the value zero. So B is zero, F is zero, I is zero, and L is zero. So you have that. So what's next? What you can do next is, since you know that these values lose, the values right before them are all winning values. So something like J, J is a value that if, if you land onto J, if you start at J and then you move one, then the opponent will lose the next turn. Same with values like C, A, etc., etc. Now, there's also another condition for the Sprague-Grundy function, Sprague func Sprague function, which is that if you can also move to a position such as from A to E, where you don't necessarily put the opponent in a losing position, you also add another value. So A is actually two. From C, we can move to E, B, or D. So this problem for that is three. From D, we can move to F. Did I have a value two here? Oh, and we can move to H, sorry. <laughs> Messed up the diagram. So that also has a value of 2. Meanwhile, E, you can only move to B, so that has a Sprague-Grundy of 1. G, you can only move to two different values, E and J, so that's 2. From H, we can only move up to F, so that's 1. J can only move to I, that's 1. K can move to both J and H, that's a 1. And of course, L is zero. So what do these values mean? If you're at a zero, you've lost the game. If you start there, you essentially start at a losing position. If your opponent places you in that position, you've lost the game. This, now, as for all these other numbered values, if you start at this position or your opponent lands you in one of these positions, you can, it playing the right moves, will automatically land you a win. So you want to end up on these numbered values 
and you want to have your opponent end up on these zero values. So this is the solution. This is the values for the Sprague run fundy <laughs> Sprague rock function. The Sprague Grundy function. My apologies. And if you have any questions or you need me to clarify anything, feel free to comment. If there are any other problems you'd like me to solve from textbooks, classwork you've taken, something you've gotten wrong, or something you're just curious about, also feel free to comment and I'll give it a look. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day.